good to see you. Thanks for taking some time out to, to work with us and talk about virtual touch in this world right now where there's just more and more disconnection and people are experiencing less touch. Can you tell us what you've discovered around virtual touch? Yeah, absolutely. And I want to say hi to you, Liam, and thank you for the opportunity to really present around virtual touch. And to all of you that are watching, I want to say welcome and hello. And then at some point, I will be walking all of you through a demo of doing virtual touch. So you'll get a really good idea of how to do it. But to get back to your question, which I think is a great question, one of the things we're really recognizing now is in this midst of COVID-19, how it's disrupting all of our physical contact. So that's important because we really know in this work that gentle kind of caring, kind touch really is the bedrock of safety for most of us. And uh, when that's disrupted, we get really disoriented. So we're in a really big time of being disoriented by all that's going on in the world right now. So what we're finding with touch, and especially virtual touch, since we really began doing this around six months ago, is that it allows a lot for oxytocin to be released into the system. And oxytocin is important because it helps you to feel safe again and helps you to feel oriented again. But mostly it has a calming influence on the nervous system. Um, and it helps to deal with all those sensations of when you're unsafe, you tend to feel anxious, you tend to feel nervous. So we started to ask ourselves, well, what are the possibilities of virtual touch? Since that's what we were left with because we no longer were having people come into the office and we no longer were doing literal physical touch, which is what we normally do on a daily basis as we have clients come in and they get on our table. So we started to do this over the airwaves through Zoom and on the phone. And we said to ourselves, okay, let's listen in and hear what our clients are saying about this. So we started to get very similar reaction to the virtual touch that we were getting to the actual physical touch, which was great. People were reporting feeling like same sensations of calmness and connection to their bodies as they did when we literally did touch. And then we kind of took it a step further. We started seeing people who weren't people we were previously seeing in our office. So these are people who called, they were new clients. So it's been interesting to me that over the last six months, I've gotten a really good amount of new clients from around the world. And they started reporting similar things. That through this touch, they were beginning to experience again, that sense of calmness, a sense of um, ease in their bodies, a sense of being able to breathe easier. And so we thought, wow, there's really a lot of possibilities now with virtual touch. We could reach out across the world in a way we never even thought to do before because we were so focused on doing it in person. That's great to hear. And I'm sure there's a lot of interest in how does this work as you've been doing more of it and you know, what are some of the values that you're starting to see come through and the benefits that clients share beyond you know, ease and calming. Yeah, I'd love to share those with you because they've been really important to us to see, is this valuable in the first place? And we have a resounding yes. What are really the benefits that we can look towards? It's great to be able to share some of that with you. Um, so one of the values that we see is there's this innate ability for virtual touch to activate the proprioceptive system. Okay? Now that's a really important system in the body. That system, and it's a very real system, operates, it allows you to know where you are in time and space, and it allows others to know where you are, and allows you to know where others are. Also, internally, allows one part of your body to know where another part is. So when that system is offline or injured through trauma or neglect, people will experience a lot of like what we call clumsy type behavior. They'll bump into things, okay? Or their head won't know where their heart is or their arm won't know where their leg is. So as I said earlier, COVID is very highly disorienting. So the value of activating that system is it has a positive orienting effect. So I wanna say that again. It has a positive orienting effect. It allows you to know where you are again in time and space. 
when we don't have a sense of where we are, consequently, we lose a sense of who we are. And that's really important. So when we come back and we're able to balance again and get a focus, oh, this is where I am, this is where another is, it allows us to make contact and reconnect in ways that heretofore would be really highly impossible. So that's the inherent value we see in it, that's a value. Now, when I uh, worked years ago in the high schools, so this is like 40 years ago, I used to be a counselor in the high schools and I was actually just starting my somatic journey then myself in terms of becoming a somatic therapist. Um, my background is as a uh, licensed psychologist. What we noticed in these high schools back then is students whose proprioceptive systems were being injured or they were being abused at home or there was something that was happening, they would exhibit a tremendous amount of clumsiness, much more than your normal kind of uh, teenage clumsiness. Teachers would refer those students to us, disciplinarians, the principal, and as we sat with them, we would get to learn that there was a number of things that were happening in their systems. And so, as I think back on, I think that's probably the first place I really did any real kind of virtual touch because we weren't allowed to touch uh, literally in those schools. I would then ask students to, you know, imagine my hands there or feel my hand there in a very gentle, supportive way. And we would start to see major shifts just from that, that they would start to feel some sense of ease or breathing easier in their body. So um, I'm gonna go on and share some benefits, but I don't know if there's anything you wanna share or ask about. Yeah, no, I'm just curious about the benefits. Uh, yeah, so I, I would say there's three essential ones. Like there's many, many benefits that we're registering, but the three that I would like to speak to today because I think they're really important for people to hear is, first and foremost, it has a very calming and soothing, uh, softening experience for people in their bodies, okay? Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because when your body softens and calms, what that means is you're actually breathing easier. You're getting a little more breath into the system. Okay? So that's important because a lot of traumatic experiences and different things that we're going through take our breath away. We talk about them that way. Even as we look at COVID, it literally is taking people's breaths away. So we want to provide something that brings back that breathing. So once that breathing returns, there's a sense that you can lengthen and widen out the body again. Um, and once you get that kind of breathing, and this leads to the second kind of benefit that I would talk about with it, is a client then gets to have a, a more expansive knowledge of themselves, if that makes sense to you. So it's as if they're able to air out a lot of the stuff that's in their system, okay? Without breath, without that movement, it's hard to actually speak about what you've been through in your life or what has been done to you or what you're experiencing. So that oxygenation allows things to get aired out, allows people to speak them, allows those of us that are touching to hear them and to literally feel them through our hands and our touch. Okay. So what that does is start to connect the body into the mind, the emotions, the soul, the spirit. It sets up a communication pattern. The body's now in communication with the mind, you know, with the spirit, with the soul, with the emotions. And so many of us are divided there, we're split. We don't have that kind of communication. So touch allows for that to occur. And again, because it brings this breath in. Now, when there's that connection and that communication between the body, the mind, the emotions and the spirit, what we believe is there's a, a bigger understanding of one's life, one's existence, okay? So somatically, we think of understanding as being able to stand under your life, your experiences, the traumas, any, the, the successes, whatever it may be in your life, that you can stand under and get a base of looking at, at your life. So when we do the work in person, we're literally standing and we have our hands mm -hmm. under somebody. Now, what's important about that to us as somatic therapists is when a person really gets to understanding, it helps them to move from withstanding. We're really good in this culture withstanding stuff. You know, we've been kind of given medals for it. You know, if you can withstand, the more you can withstand, you know, the better you are. 
And so we have a lot of bodies that are organized, if you see what I'm doing with my body, to withstand what's happening, right? So everything gets pulled in in such a way. The benefit of this work is it actually helps you to start to stand with yourself, okay? So that's an important idea because we don't know how to do that as well, to stand with our own selves or to stand with another, to really be with them, okay? Touch allows that. It allows us to be with another in a way to stand with them. But when people get to stand with themselves, it frees up movements. So one of the ideas, especially in this work, is when they free up a movement, they can belong again. Okay, now somatically, belonging means to have your length again. It means to literally be long in your body. Right? That's important because that allows you to rotate your head and neck, to look around, to see pretty clearly out there in the world. Okay, yeah. All right, now, what's important about that? About every 45 seconds to a minute, I forget the exact number, we scan. We actually scan the horizon to make sure we're safe. When that ability to scan is compromised or taken away through trauma or whatever else may occur that shrinks us in, we don't have that ability. So that's gonna create a lot of nervousness because the reason we scan is to make sure we're safe. So that's a really important benefit when we get that length back, when we get that sense of belonging. Another idea that goes with that is we get rearmed. <clears throat> we get our arms back again. Okay, because when we're like this, any time this is pulled in, the shoulders and all this, it disarms us. Okay. So in true Alexander idea, like in the Alexander technique they talk about, they don't call this the shoulder, they call this the arm. This is where the arm, you know, inserts into the body. They don't even like the word shoulder. <clears throat> it's okay, it's still a way we identify it, but they're saying, you know, so when you get weight on here, which is not meant to bear weight, by the way, when any of this gets weighted down, we get disarmed. So that's important. That means we can't reach out or we can't recoil properly, or we can't reach over, we can't reach up. So it takes away a really important idea of movement for, for people. So a benefit of this is when you get your length back and you get that turning back, you get rearmed, or as we like to say, you get re-embodied. You get to have this as a resource now again for living in the world, okay? So I've said a lot, I don't know if there's um, you know, any questions or comments you have with what I've said so far, you know, but yeah. Well, you know, I think this is really fantastic that you're speaking about a lot of the powers of touch and saying that this is also found in the virtual touch. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I imagine, um, cause I know from your work where you were talking about getting up underneath, you were referencing with virtual touch, would it be the same thing? Yeah, we kind of do that. So like, I'm going to do a demo in a little bit, as I mentioned earlier, and I'll demonstrate it with you sitting, you know, so you'll get a sense of it then. But there's times when we're doing this when people are literally laying on a mat. <laughs> and, you know, I'm saying, okay, I want you to feel my hands coming under your shoulders or under your back or under your head and neck. I'm not gonna do that in the demo today because I just wanna do, give you a little slice of what it's like and do some around the shoulders. But that's a really good question. We're really finding that we can translate this and people are responding with, oh my God, I can actually start to feel this arm getting lighter or I feel your hands there or I feel my breath kind of getting softer and easier. So that's really excited us. We're like, oh my God, this can be translated in this way. And it's not something we ever really thought about before, except maybe all those years ago when I was working with the teenagers. But mostly we were in session with a table, with somebody on the table, and we were literally touching them. And is this different from having them touch themselves? Yeah, that's a really good question. So you could do that. That's another good way to make contact. But for us, this is literally us touching. And what's missing for so many people is touch, and especially now. And it's touch from another. So we have a lot of receptors in our nervous system, the proprioceptive system, that are meant to receive touch from another human being. And when they don't receive touch, they suffer. Okay, so there's 
a lot of studies, I'm not going to go into them, but there's, you know, failure to thrive was an idea back when, when babies who weren't touched literally would die from lack of touch because the nervous system needs touch from another human being. Uh, touching yourself is good. It won't hit those same receptors. Feeling touch come from another actually activates that system in a whole nother way. It gives you a sense of connection, just what you talked about in your opening question. It, it reestablishes connection. You feel linked, associated, we're all human. <laughs> it starts to bring that back to us. So does that answer your question, I hope? is that yeah, fantastic. It's just, um, I'm curious now about the virtual experience. Okay, so, so great. So I wanna do really like, might be like a 10 minute, 15 minute demo at most with you. And um, this is a demo I wanna do, I'm talking a lot about is working with clients, but I want the general public, if you're watching, to know that you could do this demo too. That this would be useful if you wanna reach out to families and friends. For therapists, it would be useful too to do this with your clients. I think it's so helpful. And I think this demo is easy to do. Now. What we found in doing this, so we're really on a discovery route here because we've been doing it for six months, so we're putting together. Well, what are basically four important instructions I would give you in order to do this? Whether as a therapist or whether you generally just wanna do this with your family and friends. So I'd like to share those with all of you now so you get a sense of those. And just to remind you, you know, if you go to do this and you don't remember them, you can rewatch the video, you can go over them. We actually are gonna have all this stuff listed on our website. I'll give you the address at the end of all this. But I, I think it's important because we're finding that these four instructions are real essential to this being beneficial to uh, the person you're touching. And that to us is the goal, is that it has a real benefit, just like I described earlier. So, what I would say first and foremost is to establish safety, safety and trust. So anytime we do touch in any, whether it's physical or not, that's our ground, safety. We wanna make sure the person feels safe. So how do you do that in virtual touch? Well, one of the ways is you tell the person where you're going to touch, how, you know, and you ask for permission everywhere you go. So today you'll see me do that with you and everyone else will see me do that with you. I'm gonna tell you I'm coming to the shoulder. You know, I'm gonna ask you, is it okay that I make contact here? Is it okay for me to touch you? If you say yes, then I will say, I want you to now feel my hands. If you say no, I'll say, oh, okay, let's take a few more minutes. And if you don't want me to touch at all, then that's a whole nother thing. Then we'll just talk for a while. I'll touch with my words or I'll touch with my presence. Okay, because ultimately I want to make sure you're safe. And I think that's really a number one for anybody going to do this. That it's so important for people to feel safe around touch. Touch is a healing mode when it's done with safety. It, it's just, I, I don't know how else to say it and kind of highlight how important that is. All right. And I kind of mentioned this number two, what I would say is when you are touching, you're touching with your whole being. That's important to know. We don't just touch with our hands. We're touching with our hearts, um, with our presence, with our energy, with our words, with our tones. Many people are injured by how something's toned because it touches them. It hurts if it's not toned in a way that people can appreciate. So you want to be conscious of all that. That's what I mean if you said it's not okay for me to put my hands there, I would still touch with this idea of tone and presence so that hopefully in some way you might be done with the experience and say, I still felt touched because there was a way I was with you. All right, so that's number two. So number three is you want to give, you know, like we talked about orienting. You want to orient. So you want to tell the person where you're placing your hands, you know, how you're doing it and why. Okay, I'm going to place my hands here on your shoulder. I'm going to put one hand on the back of your shoulder, one hand on the front, and I'm here to listen, or I'm here to support, or whatever it may be. Okay, so that becomes really important. And then the fourth instruction we would give, and it kind of connects into this idea of, you know, touching with your words, only more specifically, we want you to touch using what we would call touching words, proprioceptive type words words that would really kind of activate that system. So like hot, 
cold, warm, light, dark, heavy, light, words that we all can connect with that we know somatically and proprioceptively, okay? Gentle. So we have a list of those words. Again, they'll be listed either on the bottom here where you can, you know, a link in or on our website, we have a list of, I don't know, 40 words maybe. I don't, I don't remember the number, but we, we put together a pretty good sized list that we feel like these are useful to use because they're touching type words. So I think that's pretty clearly, you know, the instructions I would give to anybody going to do this. Like if you're doing these four things, you can be sure that your touch will have a benefit to the person that you're touching. If one of these is missing, it may lessen that benefit. You want to do it with that much kind of consciousness and, and you know, clarity. All right, so I, I'm thinking of doing the demo and I want to check with you first though. Do you have any questions about what I just said or anything about the demo before we do it? I think I'm good for now. Let's, let's go right in and then maybe um, after we could talk about maybe two um, places that you might work with a client or somebody, a friend, or to, to touch, like what are two good places to just... Not, yeah, that's a great question. I, I'm so glad you're asking because I want to demo really with the shoulders because we find that this is really a great place to do this with. In other words, I'm going to do 15 minutes. In sessions, we do hour-long sessions, hour and a half. But if people want to really just do this to have the experience, this is a great place to begin, the shoulder area, especially because this carries so much. So much gets put on here, so much weight, right? And actually, anatomically, there's nothing here that's meant to carry weight. If you look at it, <laughs> it's meant to protect your lungs, it's meant to move your arms, but it's not really good for weight bearing. So it's a good focus to do. It helps to free this and to help this be a little softer. So I'd recommend that to all of you to just really right now do like shoulders, go to that area. For more in-depth stuff, I would say, you know, give us a call or check with us and we can, you know, guide you a little bit more in that process. Does that kind of answer that? And I'll say more to it afterwards. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. All right. So if you're comfortable, you know, if it's okay with you to close your eyes for a minute, that would be great. If you're not, that's fine too. A lot of times we just have the closing of the eyes because it allows us to take away the visual and we tend to focus in on the touch a little bit more. But some people aren't comfortable with that. So, and again, to all of you out there, if the person you're going to touch is uncomfortable, it's fine. Let them keep, you know, keep their eyes open. It doesn't have to be done that way. It's just more of a, a recommendation. And can the audience follow along and go into their own? Yeah, that's a great, thank you for reminding me of that. I meant to say that. Yeah, I would love for the audience watching to actually close your eyes, or again, if you're not comfortable, keep them open. But imagine the same things. I'm going to direct, I'm going to say, I'm going to touch you. And just get a picture of me touching your shoulder as I'm touching Liam's. And that's the great thing about touch. It has a, an ability to spread throughout the community. There's many studies that show if you watch something that's touching, it touches you. If you watch somebody touch another in a way that's really uh, touching to that person, you get touched by it. And when we, we do a lot of training, so when we train and we demo in the center of the room, the whole class a lot of times can feel what's happening as a sense of touch, not just seeing it, but they'll report feeling some similar kind of connections in that way. So virtual touch is happening around all the time anyways. This is... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. Absolutely. Like when we see, if we watch something, if we watch a touching TV show or we watch, we can be touched by so much. And you'll, you'll, you'll see that, you know, that people, commercials a lot of times are meant to touch us. They touch something in us and it makes us whatever want to buy the product but we use it a good amount because it is, it can spread through a community. And that's a beautiful thing when we think of it that way. And I like thinking of it that way because I like thinking everybody I touch virtually that when they go into the community, that they're now maybe bringing some of that to the community. Right. And they're bringing some sense of that there. Yeah. All right. So let me check with you first. Are you comfortable closing your eyes or would you prefer yeah, to keep them close open? my eyes. Okay, good. So, I'm going to go to your right shoulder first, if that's okay with you. Does that feel like that's okay? Sure. And I'm going to gently place, I'm going to be at your right shoulder, like standing there and just easily. Okay. Yeah, good. 
and I'm gonna place my right hand right on the front of the shoulder and my left hand on the back of your shoulder, okay? And I'm just placing in there at this point gently to listen. So do I have your permission to touch? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks for your permission. So I'm gonna place them there now, placing my hands, one on the front of the shoulder, one on the back. Yeah, good. And people can't see me, I'll hold my hands up a little bit, but I'm actually doing it in my hands. I just, on my side of it, yeah, good. And I want you to just give yourself a moment, I'll be quiet for a moment, and you'll just signal me when you can feel my hands there. Good, and I'm gonna check in. Can you feel my hands there now? Yeah, I'm going in and out though, I know. Yeah, okay, take your time. I just wanted to check. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And as you feel in there, I'm just going to check with you. How do they feel? How's the contact feel for you? Uh, it felt warm. Okay. And Good. Um, felt a, a little bit of sort of just the presence of it. Okay. Good. But I noticed my own head is going in and out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that can happen. So it may go in and out. You may have, you know, pictures or thoughts or whatever that are moving around, which is not unusual when touch comes in. Yeah, so. If it was like real physical touch, like you were present, that could happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's not, that's far off from when we physically touch, people will report that too, you got it. Yeah, all right. So warmth and you felt a sense of contact. Yeah, good. All right, and then I'm just gonna ask, and this is a question I'm just gonna use for this demo purpose, right? But it's also fits for all of us who are walking around with so much on our shoulders. But as you feel my hands here, you know, what kind of touch or contact is this shoulder wanting from the world? Well, what I also was noticing when I was going in and out is yeah. that my shoulder was sort of falling off. Okay. All right. You know what I mean, like it's just sort of relaxing now. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to see that. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Good. Good. That's also what people will report. So, yeah, yeah. You're starting to feel it just kind of soften a little bit. So it but, was like it was like less about your hands, but what was happening is like my arm and my outer, you know, this um, rotary cuff and just everything was sort of falling down. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Falling. Yeah. Down. Yeah, I love how you're saying it. And I love the idea because that's what we want it to be. It's less about my hands and more about what you get to experience in your shoulder. Yeah. That's the whole idea of this virtual touch. What do you get to now experience? I'm starting to feel up my neck. This just, just started to run up my neck. Now. Okay, good, good, good. So just, I'm gonna be with you then another minute and I'll ask my question again in another minute. I just want you to have time because what I'm really aware of is I want you to really have the time to feel just the touch and whatever is happening in your system as you feel this touch. Yeah, because I had some, you know, tension in the right up here where your yeah. backhand is, and now it's moving. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here, it's going up, so I okay. want to say like. Go up there, get it. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So let's just do that for a minute if it's okay, right? So I'm gonna move my left hand that's on the back of your shoulder just a little bit up towards the back of that neck. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up there and get it to, to use your language if that's okay. And just make contact with it, yeah. So just give yourself a moment and feel that hand moving from the 
back of the shoulder up to the back of the neck, just gently there, just gently to make contact, you know, with this tension. Yeah, good, good. Good. And as I'm, yeah, there you go. That's a good breath. Yeah. And as I make contact with this tension, you know, what is it that this tension would like to either hear or what kind of touch would it like, you know, from the world? With your palm going in more. Okay, good. Your, your left. Yeah, I could feel it. I got my left hand. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Yeah. Okay, so it says, yeah, I want more contact. I want it to come in more. Okay, good, good, good. So I'm going to just gently move it in a little bit more. And as I move it in more, what do you notice now? Uh, just everything is sort of concentrating in that area now, as opposed to up here, it's just yeah. right under your palm. Yeah, okay, good, 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 yeah. Okay, so just be with it, let it concentrate right there under the palm. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting warmer in my body and my, okay. my arm and shoulder are soft and my neck is okay. And okay, good. One spot is just active, you know. Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to send some warmth through my hands to that <laughs> spot, okay? Just notice, you know, if that's something that this spot is wanting to, you know, to feel from the world, you know, it's so wanting to feel warmth. It really wants relief. Okay, good. All right, so let's kind of go with that word. I like it, relief. And just for a moment, give me an image or a picture of relief. Like what would relief be like for this right shoulder? Well, just starting with where I'm at, like the pain subsides. Okay. It feels really painful. Yeah, so relief would be the pain subsiding. And fill out the picture a little more. What else? What would it look like? Oh, starting to go away a little bit. Um, okay, good. When you say look like, um, can you tell me a little more? Yeah, like what's your picture of a shoulder, you know, that the pain has now subsided, where it's not feeling pain, it's not feeling stress, or, you know, how would it move? How would it you know, what would it look like if you were to see it, you know? Mm. Uh, I'm not really getting a visual so much as just a sensation of just a release. Um, yeah. Like right now I'm moving it, just... Okay, cool. All right, good. So the word that comes to me in my hands, what I'm feeling, because I'm listening really with my hands, is this word is, is freedom, that it would have some sense of freedom. Yeah. Is that, does that fit? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, all right, good. So I'm gonna now begin to move my hands. So I'm gonna move my hands, one on the front, one on the back, over to the top of the arm with this idea of freedom. I'm gonna now just invite that idea into this space. And then I'm gonna just bring my hands around the top of the arm, like the bicep and the tricep. And I'm gently going to just start to move down. So I'm going to move the top of the arm down and away from the shoulder a little bit. So there's space and freedom. You know, freedom for it to swing or freedom for whatever it needs to do, whatever movement. Then I'm going to move down the bicep and tricep area, the top of the arm. And I'm going to come to the elbow. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to invite the elbow to move down and away from the upper arm. And again, just inviting that idea of freedom all the way down to the elbow. Then I'm going to move my hands across the elbow into the forearm. And I'm going to invite the forearm to move down and away from the elbow. Okay, great. You're doing great. Again, that whole sense of freedom. Then I'm going to come to the wrist, in that area, and invite the wrist to move away from the forearm. Yeah, great, good, you're doing really good with that sense of freedom. Then I'm gonna to go to the front of the hand and the palm of the hand. And I'm gonna invite that to move gently down and away from the wrist. Great, and then I'm gonna to come to the fingers and invite those to move away from the hand. Just some space in there, freedom. And then I'm gonna bring my hands out. And I'm gonna give you a moment just to experience whatever you're feeling now on that right shoulder. Yeah, everything is subsided like that. It was very painful. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and I kind of want to move it around. Yeah, do it. Move it around. That's a good idea. I don't know where your hands are right now, but I... Yeah, no, my hands, I've, they come back to myself. I've kind of like just shaken them out a little bit. I just want you to take, yeah, move it around because that's what you do when it's free. Yeah. It's free to move. Move it however it wants to move. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. You did great. So just if you could do it, you know, in a couple of adjectives, you know, how that shoulder is feeling or how it, how you would describe it compared to the left side, say like. Well, first of all, I thought there's no way you, anything was going to happen. There's, this was just too pain. Yeah. So that's really funny for me right now. Um, uh, okay. th th this is very loose and like I said that falling off that nice you know whereas this one is up yeah yeah so uh you know like I, I just feel like okay here it is now that yeah we're... yeah yeah and, and it looks that way it looks very loose and I love even how you said the word this one is up you know just the way you yeah yeah and and when you look you can see like the whole right side of your face and looks softer to me than the left so I, I you know as you said that I was like my whole right side feels different from the left like you draw that that line yes that centering line yes. and the side is tight yes right? yes right? and yeah this like all the way like into my pelvis you know yes just... yeah and and that's the other you know importance about touch virtual touch is you know it allows you to really recognize those differences when everything's doing it the same way, it gets habituated and it can't really get a message of what even relief feels like. But now you have some sense of that on the right compared to the left. Oh, this is relief. This is freedom. Oh, this is up. You know, that idea. So that's what's great about touch too. It allows us to get a reference point like, oh yeah. You know, a lot of people go, I thought I was relaxed. And then they do this and they're like, oh my God, you know, this is what it really feels like. Yeah, great. All right, I want to come to the left now. Do you feel ready for me to come to the left or do you need another minute? I'm, I'm nervous, like, okay, is this going to happen? Or, or... <laughs> yeah, okay, great, great. Right. What happens if this one stays up? Oh my God. <laughs> I, I had this transformative touch and look at me, I'm, I'm leaning to the right now all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, ha I, ha I have a pretty good sense that this side's going to respond well, mainly because the other did. So if it's okay with you, I want to come to that side. You tell me when you're ready, when it's okay. I'm, I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. And, and I'm going to, again, this time I'm going to place my right hand on the back of that shoulder and my left hand on the front, okay, because I'm going to be standing facing that side. Okay, yeah, good, good. And... Just again, signal me when you have a sense that my hands are there, but before we do that, is it okay that I put my hands there now? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, all right, great. So I'm gonna place my hands there now, and I'm gonna just do it again to listen. Just to listen in here, yeah. And you let me know, give me a signal when you feel my hands there. Mm. 
Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. So funny. I had such a feeling in my hands that you were going to say yeah in that moment. I could just, I felt you show up there. So good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the other part because touch is reciprocal. So as I'm touching, I'm being touched. I, I'm feeling, you know, you're touching me in a sense, you know. All right. All right. So first I want to check before I ask the question I asked on the other side, just if that right side could say something to this left shoulder, what would it say right now? Relax. Yeah, it would say relax. And how would this left shoulder respond? It's already starting to. Okay, it would say, I'm already starting to. Yeah. Okay. All right. So on the right, we had this idea of warmth and freedom. I'm going to stay here again. I'll be quiet for another 30 seconds or so and give you an opportunity to feel my hands and just notice whatever you start to notice again, because you're really good at, um, you know, noticing after the touch what sensations are happening. Well, just for disclosure, like um, frustration is coming up. Okay. And then my, my, my back and my ribs just started to sort of activate and, okay. um, and, and yet my, my left side has sunken. Okay. Yeah. Down. So it's, yeah. the energy has shifted away. Yeah. So it's sinking. And as it's doing that, you're starting to feel something with the back and the ribs, you know, and if we were doing like a longer session, I might even go there and get into all that material because that's kind of what happens. It starts to connect into like, oh, there's something happening in the back and the ribs. But it's good for you to notice that, right? If we come back to the shoulder and we ask this shoulder what we did on the, on the right, what is it that this would like to feel? You know, what kind of touch or contact is this really looking for from the world? Just um, press both hands into the shoulder. Okay. All right. Good. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to press them in. Like a vice. You know? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to press them in. And when they're pressed in like a vice, what does that do for that shoulder? Mm, it just pushes out towards my neck and then down towards into my rotary cup and a little of my arm. It just sort of breaks up the energy where your hands are. Okay. All right. All right. So in a way, what this shoulder is looking for from the world is some help in breaking all this kind of, I don't know, the word that comes to me, but you tell me is like stagnant energy or this energy that's just been kind of, you know, coalescing there or collecting there. Yeah. Okay. It's like waking up is the thing. Like it's like okay. Like waking it up instead of breaking it up. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So that's giving, the, it, giving it like assistance just to really yeah and moving it out and moving me okay to the neck shoulder and down to the arms yeah okay all right good good so assistance and waking it allowing it to wake we're kind of breaking it up somewhat but really in doing that waking it up and giving some assistance to move some of this stuff out whether it's down the arm and out, or if it goes out through the top of the head, but somewhere to move it out of there. Okay, good, good. So I'm gonna begin the movement now. That was a really good breath, nice breath there. That's the other thing to note. You start to breathe. You start to get a little deeper in your breathing. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, and like I did on the right, I'm gonna take my hands gently, come to the top of the arm, okay, the bicep and the tricep, and I'm gently going to invite that to move down and away from that shoulder. And even invite that whole shoulder to move down and away from the neck as I'm doing that. With this idea that we're going to wake it up. We're going to give it some assistance. We're going to break up a lot of this material that's been collecting and coalescing and we're going to move it out of there. It's enough. It's long enough you've been carrying it. Okay, so good. I move my arm as I feel, as you're talking or do I just yeah just give me just a minute to go down the arm and then we'll, we'll get you to move both of them and move that one especially so now I'm going to come down to the elbow and invite the elbow to move down and away from that upper arm and again with that same idea of waking it up 
you know, we'll even bring in what the right talked about, some freedom over here too. Some dispersing of all this material that's been, you know, in there that's been difficult to carry around. Then we're gonna to come to the forearm and invite the forearm to move down and away from the elbow. And then down to the wrist. <laughs> My hands are almost touching the floor where I'm at, <laughs> you know, and inviting the wrist to move away from the forearm. And then just getting the hand and the palm of the hand and the back of the hand to just invite that to move away from the wrist. And then the fingers going down and letting the fingers really lengthen out away from the wrist. Just moving this stuff right out through there. And I'm just gonna bring my hands out and I'm gonna step back away for a minute, give you a moment with whatever sensations you're experiencing right now. I just feel that elongating from moving down my arms. Yeah, good, good. And how's that feel for you to have an elongated you know, left arm. It's good because you, you broke it up, woke it up, and it's moving like from my neck, like the base of my head just feels like I'm moving the energy all the way down through and in my forearms. And yeah, that's great. Good. Now, if you'd like, move it however you'd like, like you did with the right, you know, and you could start moving it or moving the shoulder, or whatever, you know. And you can surely invite the right to participate along with it too, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, and if you want, you can just gently like you know, turn your head from side to side, you know, turn your head to the right and then all the way back to the left and just notice what that's like to, you know, as you do that movement. Probably would have been great to do that movement before we did the shoulders just to see if there was any difference, but just see what you notice now. Oh, I notice a big difference. Yeah. Um, remember all that shooting up my neck? Yeah, yeah. So not there. Not yeah. There. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And how is that for you to not have that be there, all that shooting up your neck? What a relief. I yeah. Was, I didn't think this that anything was going to happen here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even that's probably a relief. Belly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. So I like that idea of relief for you. That what we might say for you right now is that you need some real relief whatever that means for you, you know. And again, if we were doing a, a full session, I would explore that, you know, what that really means, you know, for your back, for your ribs, for your hips, for your legs, for your feet, you know. But even doing this much, we get an idea. That's something you can kind of be with now, you know, over the next couple of weeks. Like, oh yeah, I need relief. Maybe what you start to ask of the world, you know, give me some relief please, or, or you may demand it, you know, like we do it in many different ways. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to just have us like close out this portion, the demo here, if that feels okay, unless there's something else you want to share. No, I just, I like the, the notion about the relief and it ties in with my life and, um, and that the frustration had come up, remember? And, yes. You know, yeah. So the ribs are, good in the back and that that signaling just is gone and yeah yeah I really, I really. yeah okay good so when you're ready and you, you, you get a sense of it because i i really see you're still in the experience you know but you'll signal that you're ready when you open your eyes you know but do it when you're you know in your timing yeah okay welcome back yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. yeah. So we'll we'll do if it's okay with you. Just a little check in now. I hate to kind of say too much to take you too far away from the experience, but just for the nature of you know uh, what we're doing here, just to get a little bit of information if that's okay with you. If not, if it's too much, tell me and we'll just move on. You know, to the next ideas. But I was going to just check in a little bit 
more about you know what you're experiencing or what sensations were really important for you yeah i think to recap it was sort of along the lines of um uh, like it was really hard to feel your hands because i think it was that like there was that much tightness and and then also the disbelief and then like can anything really and then if there was a lot of pain a lot of it really hurt um and i just thought there's no way i need somebody to go in there with their knuckles and, yeah yeah you know, and then it just started moving and you know so now i i yeah i think i sort of recapped it the frustration the, the asymmetry you know of the two sides and and now i just sort of feel connected i, I noticed um sort of those in your belly diaphragm gripping like stuff is dissipated so yeah i think it was it was good yeah yeah good I, I, i'm glad and i think that's important what you're pointing out that for a lot of us when we get to these places we think we need someone to go in really deep sometimes we do but a good amount of times we need touch even virtual touch because what that does is allow that material to kind of move out towards the touch and it gives you a, a an experience of it when i said earlier you get to kind of have an experience of your life you know so those words you're using are experiences of life frustration you know um, held um, kind of in a position so much that it's hard to feel touch anymore right. you know that starts to describe a life experience yeah not just the body experience but you know it's your body that experiences life so you know as you can see like in the demo we keep going to the body because the body tells the truth the body has that wisdom it, ha it, it has the knowledge of what's happening you know it speaks it maybe as a body sensation but if we took that and we said no that's generally in life what's going on i need some relief i need touch and i may need somebody to get in there you know like when you asked me to move in closer i felt much more energy like i was really doing that okay good and you were responding to that because that helped you feel like it was moving and breaking everything up yeah. so that to me is the importance of the touch you know again sometimes touch you needed to get in there other times this kind of gentle touch allows that material to begin to get shown and known and recognized Okay, because so much of that aspect of our existence doesn't really get airtime. You know, you tell people and people don't want to hear how frustrated you are, or they want you, as we said earlier, just withstand it. Come on, grin and bear it, get back to it. You can take it, that kind of idea. Here, the body's saying, I need relief. I need it now. Yeah. You know, and I was even afraid nothing was going to happen. Like this is just going to be one more thing, and I wasn't even going to, you know, right. <laughs> as I was calling for it. So I really thank you for being willing to do this. It's not easy to do, especially in this kind of you know setup. But but thank you for doing it and your availability to really you know connect in with it. I think that's really important. And if it's okay with you, I don't know first if you have any more you want to say or questions before I kind of move on with some ideas here no i like that you said um if you're doing this with friends and partners and you know working with shoulders i don't know if there's any other body for feet i don't know about it yeah I, I think you could do feet you could imagine touching feet we could have went there you could imagine touching the back of the head and the neck even you know sitting like you're sitting sometimes when i'm with somebody and we're on the phone i ask them to if they can you know to imagine they're reclined Sometimes we're talking to somebody on the phone and they're in their car because they don't have anywhere in the house where they feel like they can have the, you know, a space where they can do a session without somebody, you know, interrupting them. So they go out in their car. So they literally can't lay down, but they can picture that they're reclined. So they'll do that. And then I'll come under the head and neck. Imagine I'm under your head and neck, which by the way, if I were to do more with you, that's where I would go next with you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go right to your feet. With somebody else, I might. But from what I felt in my hands, I would go to your head and neck. And then offer that area to lengthen out a little bit. Because all of this kind of got shortened, right? And, you know, we, we have that in our language. We talk about when people are short with us. They shorten us. Life shortens us. Takes away that length. And 
when we get that length back, just as you're saying, we get a sense of freedom and, you know, it helps release the pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because a lot of what we call pain really in a body means it doesn't have space. It's, it's kind of so jammed in there. That's what causes the pain. There's not space for your own experience, your own existence. So virtual touch gives a sense of that space again to you. Just like physical touch would, the kind of touch we're doing. Yeah. So you look that way to me. You look like there's just a little more space here. I hope you're still feeling that. And, and elongated. Yeah, yeah, you, you have that sense to you. And it's so interesting, yeah. They're settled in more of a proper position, not so. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's how you look, like you're sitting, like I'm, almost, I'm aware of it in myself. I feel like I'm now aware of like how I've been kind of, yeah, exactly. you know, like this way. And it's helping me to kind of come back to that idea. You know, of really, you know, sitting on your sits bones, so to speak, letting that area support you. Because a lot of us hold ourselves up from here. You know, we think we're sitting, but we're actually still supporting ourselves when we, you know, sit down from the shoulders. And you're not meant to do that. All right. So I want to share just a couple of things as we start to come to a close here. But um, I think you, you could say it as you just experienced it. And I think those of you watching would have a similar kind of experience that, Virtual touch really opens up a door for discovery. You start to get to know things about yourself and your life and your life experience. And the nice part is when someone's touching you, it gets known. So much about having it be known is important. So in the nervous system, when it's known, it completes a circuit in the nervous system. So if you talk to somebody and ask them a question or you say hello to them and they don't say hello back, it's an incomplete, uh, juncture point in the nervous system. It, it, you, you'll actually wonder the rest of the day why that person didn't say hi back to you. So that's important, it completes it, right? You, you get that sense. So when touch comes in and, and you get to share that and somebody says, okay, I see the frustration or I feel it or I hear it, that helps it just in that way, just to have it to be known and to be shown, okay? So, and I, I was thinking, as I was doing this with you of a client I worked with just last night. And um, it, it's really the third session I'm doing with her. She's one of those clients who I've never seen before. She actually is in Japan. And I'm here right outside of Philadelphia using virtual touch with her. And I'm amazed by what we're able to accomplish. I, I really, this is very exciting for me and for all of us who do this uh, transformative touch. And she got to really experience her shoulders, similar to you, lighter, longer, you know, freer, easier. And so she said to me, and you know, she's 52 years old, she said, I actually have some sense of somatically of in my body what it feels like to feel happy. And that was pretty amazing because she said she hasn't felt happy in so long. And she has a pretty intense abuse history. I'm not gonna get into it, but so for her to feel happy. And so the next thing she talked about was how this idea of happy shifted for her this idea of being able to find love. That now she felt she could reach out and receive love or reach out for love. Whereas before, she, in her mind and in, in that whole idea, love was like the prerequisite for being happy. Now she was like, well, happy could get me to love. Mm. I could go this direction. So she found what we would call like the somatic complement to her thinking. She found the movements that would help her. These are two movements, reaching out to another and receiving from another that are essential for, you know, for love, for feeling love, for being in love. So I just wanted to give that as an example because it, it just touches me in such a way. I'm so happy that she's even had that experience. And, you know, that's three sessions. And it's, it, to me, that comes from her being touched. She's never had touch before, virtually or otherwise. She's never done anything like this. And I basically did with her what I did with you. Did a little more. I did some of like her head and her neck and her upper back but I've been going like really slow and very professionally, carefully with her, with a lot of safety. So I hope that's just a, at least a, a good example. And her saying to me, wow, similar to what you said, I didn't think anything like this was, could happen. So she was so 
pleasantly surprised that she could feel those differences mm -hmm. and have a sense again of having her arms available to her. So again, you know, I, I just told that whole story, so I don't know if there's anything you want to uh, ask about or say to that. I, there's a little bit more I was going to share. Um, yeah, no, I think it sounds like um, you were using the four components that you talked about earlier and, and reminding that the, the, the tone and sounds and words and all played a part in that experience for this. Yeah, like even, even with this particular client, you know, we first made contact through email. So even when I was writing her emails, I was thinking touch. I was writing emails, I was touching her through the emails. And she even commented on that. Well, what you wrote me really touched me. Really helped, you know. And that was a way for her to already get an experience of it. So you're right, that does go back to those four instructions, those four kind of ideas that are important in this. And I just want to say a couple thing, last things in closing, you know. So in this work, what we like to do is think of the body and the soma, and kind of even what you were talking about, is starting to understand the injuries that have happened to this body, that were done to this body. So as a, as a psychologist, as a licensed psychologist, I can tell you, we got really good at talking about issues, the issues that people had. You know, an issue with this, an issue with that. And you know, I remember once I worked with a psychiatrist on the table and uh, he told me all these issues he had. He listed like 50 of them and I leaned over into his ear and I said, stop making your life into issues. And he opened his eyes and he goes, that's it. I don't feel whole if I don't have an issue to work on. If a client doesn't have an issue, I give them one. And so it was a big discovery for him to go like touch. We could really start to look at how he was injured. And so we like to think of the issues when they're translated back into the soma, help us to discover how actually these were injuries. Okay. Because the mind's good at translating the injuries to the soma into an issue. But when we touch, another benefit is it helps to translate that back into the injury. And we find that we treat people differently when we treat them as being injured rather than treating them as having an issue. Okay. When we tend to treat people that they have an issue, we tend to be really negative or condescending or you know, judgmental about it. But if they have an injury, we tend to have a little more empathy. We tend to touch in a different way. And for most of us, these actually really are injuries. Uh, even when we talk about, like, say, a panic attack, sometimes we think of that as a condition or an issue. But we're finding from the body that the body knows the attack it was under. It was attacked in some way or another, sometimes by somebody else's panic that came at that. So that's a different way to treat somebody, you know, is from that perspective. And that leads me to this last idea that we always work with as somatic therapists, which is, you know, when you do a treatment plan or you do treatment with clients or anybody, when you treat, you know, do treatment with them, it should be a treat. It should feel like a treat somewhere in their system. And that's ultimately, you know, what we feel happens is that people report that touch makes them feel like they've been treated in this really incredible way. It's a treat to their system that helps heal, right? So, you know, again, from that idea of withstanding a long time in our culture, we've had no pain, no gain, but we know through touch, you know, no pleasure, no treasure. It should have some feeling of a treat in it. And we see that as really essential. So, you know, in closing, I really wanna thank you. I wanna thank all of you that, you know, have been tuning in and, and, and watching this and hoping that you had some similar experiences and I want to give you our website address because you can tap in there and share your experiences if you'd like. We love hearing them. Or you can get more information about what we're doing or you can get, you know, the list of the proprioceptive words or, you know, the instructions. We'll have all that on our website. So the, the address is the somatictherapycenter.com. The somatictherapycenter.com. So once again, Liam, thank you so much. I don't know if there's anything you want to share in closing or anything else. I'm just going to say I'm touched, and uh, and this has been a virtually good experience. Ah, that's that's a great way to say it. Good. Glad you got to experience being virtually touched, and you really have that with your system. Yeah.
Thanks. Lots of possibilities here. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's where we're excited. We're like, oh my God, even after COVID's gone, hopefully soon, that it's a distant memory that we can offer this across the globe and you know, across the country. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Bye-bye now.